Hi, I'm Gary and welcome to my shop. In this video, I'm going to talk about some lathe dust control options that I'm going to install. Try and keep better control on the dust that's created from my lathe and the projects. So, what I got here is the lathe dust collection system that, as you can see in the picture there, it sucks up dust as you're turning on your lathe and doing sanding. It's for small projects such as pens, bottle stoppers, and maybe as big as some utensil handles like ice cream scoops and pizza cutters. And what I've got to go with that is this lathe chip deflector. will keep the chips from flying in my face, but I'm going to have a face shield on anyway. But this will also give some coverage that will hopefully increase the ability for this dust hood to be able to collect the dust. So it kind of encloses it a little bit more. I'll see how this works and whether or not it gets in the way. Another thing I did was I ordered some of these lathe tool rests from Rockler, 6 inch and a 10 inch. And these are advertised to be, you know, extremely smooth. They've got this stainless steel edge on it and I open them up and try them out and both of them have some nicks and scratches in them so that means my tool as I go across the tool rest can catch. So I don't see how that's going to be any better than the steel tool rest I already have. So I'm probably going to return these or if Rockler deems that these are damaged and they've got something better that actually works uh, from what I had seen and heard these are supposed to be like smooth as silk. So and that's what I'm looking for because I want my lathe tools to slide easily not catch and make some bad marks on the work that I'm turning. So besides those, I also bought this friend air shield. As you might have seen in some past video that I did, I've got this bionic UVEX air shield, face shield that I was using, and I devised this face mask here and this piece here that goes on to deflect the airflow down and out so it wouldn't fog up the inside of my shield. That's worked fairly decently, but you know, it's a two-step to get this put on, so it's not as quick and easy as the Trend Air Shield is. And of course, it's not gonna be as perfect of uh, air filtration as the Trend Air Shield is going to be. So I've had a good year, so I've decided to buy myself some extras here so I can get a better dust control and save my lungs. That's what I'm gonna work on. I'll save these as backups. And the Trend Air Shield Pro that I got, I've got it uh, plugged in and charging at the time to charge up the battery. When you first get this, it's like 24 hours to charge it. Also, I'm not sure about the battery, the charger stopping and indicating, you know, when the charge is done or if it'll keep charging. If you keep charging, you tend to overcook the battery and then shorten its life, if not ruin it. I found a tip from somewhere else that fits this socket here perfectly so I can get that made and I'll make a connector I've got one of these battery chargers here that I use for my RC airplanes and helicopters. I charge batteries on that and it does everything from NICADs to LiPos and LIFE and all kinds of different batteries and it has a control on it. So it'll stop charging once it meet, reaches the full battery capacity. Whereas this one here, I'm not sure if it will. From what I've seen on other videos, it doesn't sound like it will. But I did notice when I was plugging and unplugging this that there is a green light on that charger and then there's a red light. The red light is on when it's charging and when I've got it unplugged the green light is on. So I'm wondering does that mean it'll stop charging when the battery's full? I'll find out. Hopefully by the time I complete this video I'll have an answer for you on that. Otherwise I'm going to be MacGyvering something to work with the battery charger I use for my airplanes and stuff. Uh, that'll be a lot safer because it'll turn off when the battery is full. So anyways I will get on with this get these things mounted exception of these tool rests. I'm not going to use those because they're defective or they're just not what they're advertised to be. I'll get the rest of the stuff installed and we'll see how it performs. So stay tuned. Well, an update here is that Rockler did send me replacement lathe toolbar rests and these are very good, excellent. Very smooth, silky, just like the advertised. Works great and I'm gonna be looking forward to using these. This one's the 10 inch one and I also got the six inch one and you can see it's got that stainless steel bar on here across there then this is very smooth it's going to be very easy on the fingers very good deal i'm very glad that they fixed that and it came out just as good as what they advertised it to be next step i'm going to show you about setting up this lathe dust right dust collection system and all the parts here i'm not going to bore you with all the assembly here it's not real complicated and they have good instructions in here and then some instructions here on how to use it on your lathe and it works pretty good. So I won't bore you with the assembly of this. 
I'll give you a few tidbits about what vacuum to hook it up for the dust collection. Now I tried connecting this to my two and a half inch shop vac hose and this is the hose that connects onto the back of the dust collection hood. And this is a two and a quarter inch outside diameter on this. This fits into this. And then this is a two and a half inch outside diameter and that fits into this. So that works, you know, good for that. I also tried out my four inch vac and I used this adapter here, which is a four inch and this is a two and a half inch outer diameter. So this fits into there fairly well. Then I've got this coupler for the four inch that fits inside of this one. Then I've also got this other connector here that kind of rotates a bit, gives you some ability to flex your hose around and maybe get into a position you need. Then this fits inside here, fits the four inch connector for my central vac. And I found that with the four inch, I get a lot better airflow. Even though you're only coming in through like a two and a half inch opening here, I found that the four inch vacuum gave me better airflow than the two and a half inch did. So that's what I'll stay with. And I've got it set up as I'll show you how the hose, I've got it draping on the floor in front of my lathe and then connecting to all of this. And it works pretty well. It doesn't get in the way of my feet or anything. So I'll show you as I go along here. Okay, the next I'm going to show you how to mount this on onto the lathe bed. This is the assembly that will hold this lathe dust collection assembly. And but I'll leave that off until after I get this mounted to the bed. Now this has a plate that goes underneath here. This slides underneath the rack of your lathe bed. So you set this on here and get the screw started. And it's a little bit tricky getting this in because you can't just slide it in like this to the track on your lathe bed. I have to turn it this way sideways because this is narrower this way and slides in better. I'll give you a view of that in the next shot. Okay, as I bring this bar over here to put on, you can see this is normally how it would go, but it won't fit within the slot that's allowed here in the lathe bed. So I turn it sideways, it'll slide in there. Although it is a bit snug, a little bit precarious. So you have to kind of feed this along because you come across these various bars along here where it can catch on. And you have to be careful to keep that straight and feed along correctly so you get all the way to the point that you want to be. Okay, so now I'm all the way to this point I want to be on. Actually, I need to rotate this around so that this part is in the back part because that's what's going to hold the hose for the vacuum and stuff. Get this bottom part here lined up so it's in the track. Get this tightened up a bit. So it's holding there fairly well. And I try to get it as close to the head as I can, but if you get right up against the head, you can't turn this knob to tighten this down. So you need to back off just a little bit so you can turn that knob as close as you can, but still be able to turn the knob. Then you can lock it down. That'll hold that in there pretty securely. Next, I will be putting this dust hood. It goes down on top of this bar here, comes down to there, and you tighten up this knob here. Kind of get it into relative position. And then we'll kind of tweak this position later based on the workpiece that we have in here. Now I have this other shield for protection, chip deflection. This is on flexible arm and a couple of screws that holds this plastic in place. I've assembled all of this together. This is very simple and the instructions are very easy to follow. But I can mount this on here, kind of bend this around and position it, tighten the knob down on the back part here to hold this on the, there and then tweak my position where I want it. Works great. Then the last part I'm going to be putting on here, at least for now, <laughs> is my banjo to hold my tool rest. Slide that up. Then I'll get all that put together as I go here. Now this is pretty much it for this part here other than I'll be connecting the hose and so forth in the back here but it's going to be hard to see from this vantage point so but it does work very good. Okay, trying to get a couple of shots here of how I've got this vacuum line connected here. And it comes down into this clamp here that holds it in place. And I've got this part here that's going to connect to my central vac system. And to try and get another angle view here as this line comes down. Clamps in here and this is the what will connect into my 4 inch central vac system. 
Okay, so here you can see how my vac system is connected here with this hose that goes along down here. And it doesn't really get in the way of my feet. I can get in here and do my work. Then it doesn't interfere. My feet aren't even touching the hose down there. So that works pretty well. And it gives me a good airflow with the 4 inch hose. Okay, so one issue that I found that I ran into here was that I needed to put some of these 7 millimeter pen spacers on what I'm doing like this one piece body for a chalk holder. Without these, this goes in too far and this knob here for tightening my quill hits up against this knob here for this dust port. So what I had to do is I added two 7 millimeter spacers on this end and two on this end, then cranked my quill out all the way, exception of maybe the last little bit there because I need to be able to tighten it a bit, and got this fairly centered on the dust port. So I tightened down my tailstock, then I can tighten up my quill a bit, and that will seem to hold it in there pretty well. One little tidbit on working with this dust port collector and sometimes we have to make some adjustments to make it work. In setting this up, I've found getting this adjusted and the length in there so it will fit my lathe chisel correctly. For this, it's like a pen blank. This one in particular is a chalk holder blank that I'm doing. So I've got my height set up here so I can engage this at the correct level. And one of the ports in here is a small port. I've tried hooking this up with my two and a half inch shop vac and also my four inch central vac. And I found out that my four inch central vac gives me better air Flow. As you'll see as I go through here and how this sucks down the airflow, I've also got this uh, shield here that I'll use. So as you can see, there's no perfect system that's going to evacuate 100% of all your sawdust, but this does a fair job, and I think this will save a lot as far as sawdust around the shop. Also, in my face and lungs. And again, these days I'm using the Trend AirShield Pro, and that helps a lot. The more dust collection that we can do, the better to save everything else. The last part of this is about the Trend AirShield Pro that I've got to replace the previous face shield and dust mask that I was using. This works a lot better. I'm rather surprised at how good this really filters the air or keeps the dust out for you because it's a positive air pressure inside of it. And getting this on and off, especially when you've got glasses, can be a little bit of a trick, but a little bit of practice you can get it pretty well. I try this. And, apart from messing up my hair, a uh, little bit of practice, you can get this down pretty good and get it on and off pretty quick and easy. So, that's pretty much it for all the lathe dust control that I'm doing. It's never 100%. It's, you just can't hermetically seal around your lathe and keep all the dust under control that easily. So, try and do as best as we can, collect as much as we can at the source and also protect our lungs with uh, things like these face shields or dust masks. Well, thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and you got the inspiration to make something and to set up your own dust control with your lathe. If you enjoyed it, please give me a like and also share it with your family and friends. Also, please subscribe to see what I may come up with next and be sure to hit that bell icon so you won't miss out on anything. I also greatly appreciate all the comments that I get from you. I get a lot of great ideas. So, if the ladies don't find you handsome, at least they should find you handy. Thank you.